tangible. Let's go here. Proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1. GV. Whiskey. One. Good. Vibrations. I'm going to tell you about a little antenna that I made when I was living in the fraternity house in June of, I guess it was probably 1976. It was summer uh, schedule, summer school, so there weren't very many people in the fraternity house, and so the RFI that I doubtless propagated into the house didn't affect people very much because there just weren't very many of them. The temperature in the room inside of this fraternity house, and here's the inside of the house, here's me somewhere behind this third floor window. That is a Hustler mobile antenna for 14 megahertz. Do you remember those things? They were about eight feet high from top to bottom, inductively loaded about two-thirds of the way up and the main radiating portion right there. I just uh, decided I'm going to make a dipole out of this, a vertical dipole out of this thing. I'm three stories up. It was a kind of an urban environment, but there was fairly good visibility towards the west. So I just dangled a quarter wavelength wire about 16 feet straight down at the feed point which was right there and had myself a little lopsided vertical dipole but it was nevertheless a vertical dipole resonant for the 14 megahertz band and it happened to be field day so I got on there and started making some contacts with my radio that had 200 watts DC plate power input which would make it about 100 watts RF output and I made quite a few contacts I was never a really fast operator on any of these contests but I made uh, contacts at the phenomenal rate of 60 in one hour and I thought wow that's not bad for an old uh, well a young in young in the body and old in the mind college student uh, so I went home that same weekend that same field day weekend and the next day the first day was a Saturday the next day I got on a friend station with a three meter Yagi at 50 feet on 14 megahertz and 100 watts RF output and tried again from his station to make some field day contacts and I came nowhere near that 60 per hour. This antenna really seemed to get out. It, it made DX contacts. It, it really seemed like a gangbuster, if you, I may say so myself, a band buster of an antenna. Three feet up, vertical dipole, their heavy line there being the wall of the fraternity house, half of the RF going in to the fraternity house, and of course thereby producing nightmarish RFI for no one because there was nobody there when it was 103 degrees inside that sweltering building. You know, in Minnesota, in Minneapolis in the summer, it's not just hot, it's muggy and hot. And in, inside an unair conditioned old building, it's very muggy and very hot. But the radio worked and so did I enough to make that phenomenal number of contacts. The, the, the point of all of this is, this doesn't seem like an antenna that would work very well, does it? I mean, it seems like a real kludge antenna, if I may say so. And yet, it it really was something to behold. It was a phenomenal antenna. So again, Gibalisco's rule, don't worry about the theory so much. 
worry about what something actually does in the real world. Be concerned with what's going to happen when you try it and see. I tried it and I saw and I was happy with what I saw. Of course, being in college in a fraternity house, there was plenty of time for things other than ham radio, so I didn't spend a heck of a lot of time on the radio, but enough to figure this out, that I had a winner of an antenna. Maybe you should try it if you live in a building three, floor, uh, three stories up or something like that. But beware, you will get RFI problems in your building if you try something like this. Stan Jabalisco saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which in my favorite language means da-da-da-da-da-da.